Alrighty, so today we're going to do the season preview of the New England Revolution and the Revs. Like many teams I'll mention in the season preview, are going to be under a new head coach heading into this season as Caleb Porter is the new head coach of this team. And it's going to be interesting to see, according to the Caleb Porter cycle, that he is able to get this team an MLS Cup win within the first three years because that's kind of how it is is that during his time with columbus he was able to win an mls cup with them within the first three years and even during his time with the portland timbers he was able to win an mls cup for them and for teams that has been just desperately looking to uh, get an mls cup and especially the core that they've been building is still relatively strong and the window is, is still open uh who might not say that this might be the team that could potentially go all the way but as i'll talk about uh, a little bit later of how, yeah, I kind of said the same thing about the Philadelphia Union too, but as you probably know, the Eastern Conference is about to be a bloodbath and that there's a lot of teams you could make an argument that aren't going to be in contention for MLS Cup. But in terms of last season, it was a 15, 10, and 9 season, and they finished with 55 points and they finished in fifth place. Now on paper, that looks like it was a good season. But when you look in the service, it was a disastrous season for this Revs team. Not only with just, just them suffering just back-breaking injuries, seems like every single week, but uh, the whole ongoing scandal with, with Bruce Arena and the off-the-field situation. And that, yeah, it, it was just a nightmare of a season that the Revs are definitely looking to try to, to move past as they get into the new season. Now, despite that, they still made it to the playoffs last season as that's their last playoff appearance. But it's been a while since they have won a playoff round. In fact, uh, the last time they won a playoff round was not in the 2021 season. So in that 2021 season where they had a record-breaking amount of points, winning the supporter show and getting the most points that any MLS team has ever done with 73 points, they didn't win a playoff round in that one. Uh, they got a bye in, in that one, but obviously this is where we go back to the controversy surrounding the bye and how, you know, with them getting such a big layoff, uh, they... We're definitely not the same team that won the Sapporo show and break the, the points total in the regular season and was ousted in the, the first round and ousted by a team that eventually did win MLS Cup. That is NYCFC. But besides that, the last time they won a playoff round was all the way back in 2020 when they made it all the way to the Eastern Conference Final. And that was the year where everybody thought that, yeah, this team definitely peaked uh, very early and definitely exceed expectation that that, you know, they didn't think that they were going to exceed that expectation until a couple of years later. Now, unfortunately, in terms of MLS Cup, yeah. You already know about the New England Revolution, and you already know that. I think they're one of three original teams that came into the league back in 90, 1996. Should I just call them the, the original uh, 10 teams? Because you know how in the NHL they has like the original six. Should I just maybe start calling uh, all these teams that came into the league in 96 the original 10 teams? Because New England was one of those teams that were in... MLS, but unfortunately, they've never won one. They are, are widely known as the Buffalo Bills of MLS, or you could maybe even say the Minnesota Vikings of, of MLS, because, you know, at least with, with New England, they didn't lose four straight MLS Cup, like what the Buffalo Bills did uh, back in the 90s, and that I think it's maybe even more appropriate to say that they're like the Minnesota Vikings of of MLS because the Vikings like lost four Super Bowl in a span uh, of 10 years in, in the 70s and that's kind of the case for the refs they, they've lost a lot of their fair share uh, of mound of MLS Cup and they're looking to try to finally end that curse that that is, is within this team now in terms of players that they bought in so Thomas Shankalai I know he of course was bought in in the middle of the season but this off season, they made that move per permanent, and they made him a DP player. No surprise whatsoever. I mean, when he came in into the summer, there, uh, there was a lot of question mark of you know we don't know if this is going to be a good player or not. And boy, did it, it turns out he was a great player. I mean, there were times where uh, at part of the season he was scoring bangers left and right. I mean, that is just absolutely insane, and that I even said at times in the season he just could not stop stop scoring, and it was just a no brainer. Them potentially uh, made him a perm. Or uh, made him a, a permanent deal and basically made him a designated player as a reserve. Uh, and then you got a new goalkeeper in Henrik Ravis. So again, this is a guy that, you know, uh, I said this about Georgi Petrovic uh, when he came into the New England Revolution. And I'm going to say the same thing about Henrik Ravis. No pressure in terms of trying to fill the shoe of the previous goalkeeper that left this team. I mean, the Revs have been very blessed in terms of these last couple of seasons. Been able to uh, get a... a 
a couple of goalkeepers that are, are not only in the top tier level of MLS, but you could argue uh, the top three and even maybe the uh, on range of the best goalkeeper that, that we have seen uh, in this league. And that, you know, for Henrik Ravis, no pressure in terms of try, trying to come in and Try, trying to replicate that spot. And then, of course, they signed a couple of free agency. You got Nick Lima and Jonathan Mensa coming into this team. And I also put Albert Verlis' name on there, even though I know it's not official. But there is definitely a lot of sources saying that it is pretty close to be, being finished. And if that's the case, boy, that's going to be a great signing for this Revs team. Especially, you know, we talk about, about this Revs team and the attack being very, very good. Well, maybe the number nine position that... That is a big question mark. But besides that, they are pretty stacked in terms of the attack, especially in, in the wing position. I mean, they probably have the most most deepest uh, wing, wing uh, depth chart out of any team. And the, the quality that they have uh, up and down in that depth chart uh, could easily uh, be be, uh, be uh, probably the best uh, depth chart in terms of the wing, wing spot out of any team in MLS. Now, in terms of players that are no longer with this team, you got Christian McCoon. Justin Rennicks, uh, Omar Gonzalez, who went to FC Dallas. Then you got Ben Rivetno, uh Gustavo Bo, of course. There was that big debate whether or not if he was going to stay with, with this team. The answer is no. Looks like he is going back to Argentina. And then you also have Thomas Vickley and Ben Sweat no longer on this team. Now, in terms of the preseason schedule, they only play one preseason schedule pr prior to when I made made this video and it was a free nothing loss against NYCFC but then uh they're gonna get a couple more preseason game and it starts tomorrow where they play against FC Cincinnati and then they play against Orlando City on February 10th uh Philadelphia Union on Valentine's Day and then the day after Valentine's Day they play against FC Cincinnati now for those who wonder how in the world do they schedule two preseason game in just a span uh, of two days it's probably because they, they decided to do a split squad we usually see this happen where teams are not going to put their strongest 11 in one games and they kind of play like a split squad and and play like like different uh format of a preseason game so therefore that's why you you don't see see uh uh you you know that's why you see a situation where they play two games in two days uh it's not because they're they're trying to fatigue the team out but it's because they're playing two different fun squad uh during that time and that allows them to to schedule two games in two separate separate uh days now, in terms of them in the CONCACAF Champions Cup, I bet many people forget that the New England Revolution is in the CONCACAF Champions Cup. But, yeah, they are in the CONCACAF Champions Cup. And in leg, in leg one, they're going to uh, be going on the road to play against Independiente. And then uh, leg two on February 29th, uh, they're going to be playing at home against Independiente. And they're hoping that this, this uh, CONCACAF Champions Cup run will be a little bit better compared to last time when they were in this competition where that was... A, a a a uh that was a time where they were up three nothing against Pumas and then they suffered one of the biggest choke job we we've seen in the the Concacaf Champions Cup and that kind of feel uh the reason why this team just never recover and never never uh, kick start started once the their their Concacaf Champions Cup fertility uh ended now when you look at the first ten games uh they start on the road against DC United but then they play at home against Toronto FC and then they go on the road to play against Atlanta United before. Uh, they are going to be playing at home against FC Cincinnati. Then they play at home against Chicago. And then they play at home again against Charlotte FC. Keep in mind, there's actually going to be a lot of day games that they're going to be playing in March, which that's understandable because you do not want to play night game at Gillette Stadium uh, on on uh, March. And I think this is where I, I go back to what I said that, you know, in some way, MLS and Apple TV kind of listen to the fans a little bit about not playing these these uh, East Coast game at nighttime in March because it is still cold in the East Coast around around this time. I mean, I'm pretty sure Boston and Foxborough, to be be exact, are still going to be very cold during that time. So there was no way they, they can can't play night games and all these games are going to start at 2 o'clock. But by April, they will start playing some night games. Uh, they play against Charlotte. FC, as I mentioned, and then they go on the road to play against NYCFC before going on the road again to play against Toronto. Then they play at home against Inter Miami. I will not be surprised. There will be 60,000 plus inside that, that stadium because anytime when Miami go on the road and especially play against a team that still currently plays in an NFL stadium, yeah, you expect there's going to be a big crowd for that. And then they go on the road uh, on May 4th 
to play against the Chicago Fire. Now, in terms of their post Leeds Cup and how their schedules look like, they go on the road to play against Montreal before going on the road to play against RSL. Then they play at home against St. Louis, and then they go on the road to play against Orlando City. So, yeah, that's definitely not an easy see, uh, stretch to, to begin in terms of of their, their post Leeds Cup run. And then they play against Montreal at home before uh, going on the road to play again Charlotte. Then they play Nashville SC at home, play Houston Dynamo on the road, uh, play DC United at, at home. So, you know, they, they start the season against DC United on the road. They won't be playing DC until very late into the season. And then on decision day, they get to face against Messi and friends uh, down in South Florida against Inter Miami. And hopefully by then, they'll probably wrapped up uh, the, the, the playoffs stop by then. And honestly, I'll just say that, you know, I said the same thing about the Philadelphia Union. I'll probably say the same thing about New England. This is a team that I, I think it doesn't really matter what the regular season does. I mean, they can have an incredible regular season, but to, to my understanding, refs fans, they just want, want to see how this team play in the postseason. Because again, the expectation of this team, which by the way, I forgot to uh, put it here on my season preview, but I'll, I'll mention it uh, again once we go to straight for week list. But the expectation, obviously, is MOS Cup uh, with this team. So the strength of this team is that when healthy, they're very well-rounded. So again, if they have their, their best starting 11, you can argue this is one of the best start starting 11 in, in MOS. I mean, they have some dangerous weapon all over for the, the field. And again, if Henrik Ravis is going to be a, a guy that is... I wouldn't expect him to be just as good as what Georgie Petrich and Matt Turner is because that's a lot. A lot to, to ask for a, a new goalkeeper. But if he is still at least serviceable, uh, he could be, be a great goalkeeper for this team. And then when you look at, at the back line, and, you know, especially once they do eventually get Brendan by back, back, which, you know, there's still a question when he could be back. He's one of the, the more underrated uh, fullback, especially attacking fullbacks in the league. And then in, in defense, I mean, uh, it, Andrew Farron and uh, and Henry Kessler are still, still a rock at at the, the the back and then you also look at this midfield and attack i mean they do have that guy called carlos Hill. i mean he still exists he's he is considered to be one of the best number 10 in the league he's the guy that of course is pulled all the string and i already mentioned about the the wing winger dev and then uh, again going back to the midfield you know getting thomas shank Kalai. this is a guy that i, I won't be surprised he's going to score more bangers uh this season and would be a good good deep line playmaker alongside with carlos Hill. But obviously, the biggest weakness you got to say about this team, uh, I said that this team is well rounded. The only, only the uh, weakness I would say that the only fault that I, I will have have when when this team is is healthy is the is the number nine position. So obviously, the number nine position is a big question because you know uh, with them decide not to to bring back Gustavo Bo, it seems like they're committed to put Veroni at, at number nine, and especially uh, with the way that we haven't heard anything about them potentially signing a number nine. Again, it looks like they're committed to hope that Veroni is that guy, and they, they they better hope that that is the case because you know, so far Veroni his time doing doing with with New England has been really really rough, and that this is really his chance to prove prove uh, that he's worth the amount that they they of course bought bought him uh, and the money that they of course used after that Adam Buxa uh, transfer it is worth worth it uh, with spending on Giacomo Veroni because if that's not the case. Now, I won't be surprised this this Revs team might be thinking about looking for a new number nine in, in the summer. I mean, that is the one position that there's a huge question mark uh, on this team. And then, of course, I know no, we're, we're not even in the beginning of the season. So why you think I put holding on to leads? Well, yeah, that's kind of the problem for Caleb Porter's team. And, and you know, Columbus fans can, can basically tell, tell Revs fans that, yeah, you got to be careful uh, about, about Caleb Porter and ha of him him basically trying to hold on to leads because if there's one thing we, we saw during his time time uh with Columbus this team was 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 just giving up leads left and right I mean it was incredible how many times they they gave up leads especially in stoppage time too that is something that that you know New England fans are hoping that that's not going to be be the case hopefully they hope that Caleb Porter doesn't go 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 really really defensive near the end of the game and and, and um decided to to uh use a conservative tactics to hold on to leads because if that's the case yeah i think we might see a a, a, a another another situation like the columbus crew uh last season just constantly giving up 
up lead, leads late and right late in the game. And that, I think if there's one thing that frustrates many, many fans, I mean, there's a lot of things that can frustrate you, but probably one of the most frustrating thing, and you could even argue this might be the most frustrating thing, is giving up points when you're in a leading position and dropping points when when uh, you're, you're on your way to get all three points if you can hold on to a lead. And then, of course, I didn't put the expectation on, on there, but obviously we all know what the expectation is for this New England Revolution side with MLS Cup. I mean, it's pretty simple. They they built this core to win MLS Cup. This is, uh, I think, the the third year that they have uh, with this core. And well, the the last couple, or actually no, this is the fourth year because they built this core starting in in 2020, and that core uh, exceed expectation. But ever since that, they have not come anywhere close to the to the Eastern Conference final. I mean, I know they had that dis. In 2021, albeit in a controversial way because of the long break, but then uh, what we, we saw in 2022 just completely completely collapse after the Concacaf Champions Cup run, and then last season we we all know what happened last last season. So you got to say that in the in the fourth year uh, of this main core and heading into the fifth season, this has to be it. This has to be 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 the year you could say that that uh, they could could potentially challenge for MLS Cup. That being said, I go back to what I said about how I said that the same thing about the Philadelphia Union, and I'll say the same thing about a lot of good team in the Eastern Conference in the season preview. It is going to be an absolute bloodbath. There is going to be some disappointment uh, uh, throughout these teams that are, are in MLS Cup or bus uh, ter territory. In fact, when I do the expectation index uh, before the season begin, I won't be surprised. There's going to be a lot of beast team that's going to be in the MLS Cup or, or bus kind of category, but... Either way, let me know in the comments below what do you think of this video. And if you're a Revs fan, what do you think is your strength, your weakness? And also, I didn't write this, but what's your expectation in, in this? I'm pretty sure a lot of New England fans are going to say it's definitely MLS Cup or, or bust. But either way, hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you do, make sure to leave a like, smash the subscribe button. And yeah, I, of course, will see you guys next time.